Um, so my name is uh, Bartosz Golaszewski. Uh, I'm a consultant. I mostly work in the uh, field of uh, embedded Linux. Uh, I've been doing this uh, for the last uh, eight years. And uh, I also contribute to a range of uh, projects uh, related to embedded Linux. Uh, and my talk today is going to be about uh, GPIOs and user space. So I'm going to start out by uh, giving a brief overview of what uh, GPIOs are, even though I, I suspect most of the people to, to know it already. Uh, then I'm going to uh, describe how the kernel interfaces uh, look like, and uh, then I'll move over to the legacy uh, SysFS interface. And finally, I will talk about the new uh, character device-based uh, interface and the uh, user space library and tools that will um, help you use it. So uh, GPIO stands for uh, General Purpose Input Output. Um, this is a generic pin uh, with, a, with no predefined function. And this can be configured at runtime. Um, so wh what can you do with, with a GPIO? So we can enable it and disable it, uh, obviously. Then we can uh, set the so-called direction, which, uh, which is a mode in which the GPIO works. So it can be output, where we actively drive the line, and uh, input, where we read the values when, when where, where somebody else uh, is driving the line. Um, and uh, an extension of the input mode is, uh, is the fact that we can make, uh, if, if of course, if the hardware allows it, we can uh, make a GPIO to be a source of interrupt, so we can be notified about, uh, about the changing state. So where do we use GPIOs? So mostly um, these are used wherever a simple, very simple kind of communication is required. Uh, so basi basically the, 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 the values we can, we can read are uh, low, that, that the line is driven low or high. So uh, for uh, input mode, this would be buttons where the user presses a button, we get an interrupt and, and, and can read the value if it's, uh, it's pressed or released. Um, it's, uh, Various uh, so so uh, var various level detectors thermostats so whenever we, we want to be informed by by some level change uh, about the, about the level change and then when uh, when we are the ones uh, who actively drive uh, the line so so when when we do the output uh, this can be various uh, LEDs buzzers uh, power switches relays uh, stepper motors for robotics um, we can implement things like uh, GPIO bit banging with so, so like a uh, uh, software uh, serial port uh, with the help of GPIOs. And uh, we have this uh, notion of uh, providers and consumers uh, of GPIOs. So GPIOs are uh, usually provided by SOCs, uh, dedicated devices uh, that expand the number of, uh, of, of GPIOs available. So we co we'll call them expanders. And uh, various multifunction devices also uh, provide, usually also provide some GPIOs for uh, for things like reset lines, uh, etc. So this notion of, of a provider and consumer is uh, modeled uh, in the kernel. Uh, we have uh, a two-part framework for uh, uh, for the for the GPIO providers, which lives in the driver's GPIO directory. And then uh, we have uh, an API for uh, consumers. So the, the in, in general, all the, all the providers live in, in, in this directory, where, whereas uh, all the consumers can, can, can be, uh, since, since the consumers can be any, any, pretty much any driver, uh, they, they are all over the place. And uh, for the consumers, uh, we have two, uh, two coexisting frameworks. So one of them is a legacy framework. It's based on a uh, continuous global number space uh, where each GPIO pin has a, has a unique number assigned in the kernel. Uh, this is uh, wrong, uh, like a wrong approach in that uh, GPIOs are a two-level hierarchy where we have uh, GPIO pins associated with GPIO chips. Uh, whereas this, no non this number space does doesn't know this, uh, this hierarchy. So uh, in order to have a better model of, of GPIOs, we have a second, uh, most re more recent uh, framework for consumers where 
GPIOs are associated with devices that may want to use them. So the example is uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the old framework, you would have to uh, call a function called uh, GPIO request, I think, and pass it a, uh, a global number. Uh, but this number can change because uh, we can have uh, dynamic expanders that are instantiated uh, later in the boot process. So this number may change and uh, this, this isn't really very reliable. So the new framework, the new, the modern approach is to, uh, I, I'll use an example of, of device tree, uh, is to uh, take like the providers will uh, tell, like w we will have uh, a special node in, in the DT which will uh, determine, like w which will define all the pins exported by a provider. Uh, we can even give them names so that it's going to be easier to retrieve them. And then the consumers in the devices, like in the, in the DT nodes of the consumer devices, we associate these GPIOs, uh, the, the ones that are re relevant for our device with, uh, with the consumer. And later in the driver code, the driver can retrieve this GPIO by its index or by, by name. Uh, so this, uh, this gives you a, a, a lot more fine-grained control over, over how, we, how we use the GPIOs and how we make them available to drivers. So yeah, and both, both uh, frameworks for the consumers uh, support uh, device resource, so we, there's no need to, uh, to free them when, when, the driver is, when the device is being uh, turned turn down. So this, the, the general idea is to always uh, write drivers in the kernel that use uh, GPIOs, but uh, sometimes it's not possible, and we, might want, we, may, we may want to um, interact with, uh, with GPIOs from the user space. So this usually, um, the, 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 ex the example use cases for that is, uh, for example, power switches and relays. So we, we, I, ha I had that problem some time ago when I was working on a project uh, that there in the kernel there is no uh, framework currently for uh, power switches and relays. Uh, it, it doesn't exist, so you, you're kind of stuck with, uh, with the GPIO, uh, with the user space approach. And then uh, there are certain devices that uh, communicate, or for example, uh, some GPSs and, and, and Bluetooth devices, they communic communicate over a serial port and then they export uh, GPIO lines for things like reset or, or, uh, or other uh, simple functions. And um, also it, it uh, came to my attention that after speaking with a couple of people involved with uh, intelligent home systems, it turned out that uh, they like to implement everything in user space and then, for example, uh, toggle the GPIOs to close window blinds, uh, etc. Uh, and another another area in which uh, which we use uh, GPIOs from user space uh, are robotics. So the legacy user space uh, interface lives in Sys class GPIO. And actually, I, I was not aware of that. Uh, it's um, someone during the conference uh, told me that uh, this interface was merged. Uh, during the time where uh, GPIO, like, where, where when the GPIO subsystem did not have an active maintainer, so uh, this might, might explain why why uh, why it's not uh, why it's not very well thought. So this is the comet in which uh, uh, in which the system was merged. And another interesting thing is that uh, it's quite young. I uh, I remember first using this interface in 2009. And it turned out uh, today, when, when, when I looked up the Git history, that it's been only merged in 2008. So, uh, I, I, but, but back then I had thought that uh, it must have existed forever, but apparently it's, it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty recent. So with this interface, uh, there are quite a number of problems. Uh, so first of all, this is a global interface. It lives in uh, SysFS, so although we can affect things like permissions, we, we, we can change the permissions of these files, uh, but we can't really take ownership of GPIO chips and uh, GPIO lines, because uh, another privileged user can, can al al always come and, and uh, change our uh, GPIOs unless we really tweak the, the, the files and permissions. Uh, and uh, then, the state is not tied to any process using it, so that means that if we have a, a program that will come and start uh, tweaking the GPIOs, export them, and it crashes and uh, I don't know doesn't get restarted or or, or doesn't uh, really uh, isn't really prepared for that, then the state remi remains exported because 
uh, in the kernel, when you, when if, if, you, if you will look at the code in the kernel, the sysfs interface is just a, another user of the legacy, um, the legacy uh, API in the kernel. So when you write, uh, if, uh, how, how many of you have used this sysfs uh, interface? Yeah, so almost everybody. So you, you know that you go to sysclass uh, GPIO, and then you write a, an absolute number to export, and a file appears. Uh, and, and you go inside, and you have a number of attributes that you can uh, write to in order to, or, or read from in order to uh, interact with GPIO. So uh, when you look in the kernel, when you write a number to the export file, it just calls GPIO request with the given number. And um, so, so this al already makes, it, uh, make, makes this interface bad in the, in, in the sense that it, it uses the uh, a legacy un interface. So uh, the API, like uh, the ABI, the ABI is not uh, very uh, convenient because uh, you need to pay attention to a number of files. Um, you can do things like, for example, you can call GPIOs for events, but this is completely unreliable with SysFS. Because what you what you do in order to wait for events, you set a file that's called edge uh, to, to to whatever edge you uh, to whatever uh, ev edge of events you, you you're waiting for, and then you poll you you call the poll function on the value for this uh, specific line. But uh, when uh, an incoming like the uh, read event uh, occurs, uh, you have to either else seek to the beginning of the value file or uh, close and reopen it. During that time, another event can appear, and it's not being queued, so you're going to lose events. Uh, another thing is, uh, although uh, if, if a GPI li GPIO line uh, has a name in the kernel, uh, and you export uh, a line that, that is named, the file, like after you write to export, a file that will appear in the directory will have the name uh, of, of, the, of this line. Uh, while by default it will be called GPIO and the number that uh, and the absolute number of the GPIO, uh, this makes, for example, looking up lines by name very uh, very complicated because you have to export or try to export every single line, check the the, the, the name of the directory that appeared, and and, and unexport it, unexport it. So uh, yeah, uh, a lot of a lot of problems with uh, with this interface and. Uh, this has led to starting uh, some work on, uh, on introducing a new uh, user space interface for GPIOs. And this was finally merged in uh, Linux uh, v4.8. Uh, and this is a bit similar, I'd say, to, uh, to how the I2C uh, user space interface works. So now we have a character device, uh, a single character device for every GPIO chip. Uh, this lives now in, in dev, obviously. Uh, and uh, to uh, I now to, to interact with GPIOs, you, have, uh, you, you only need a set of system calls. So there is uh, basically all you need is open, ILCTL, uh, poll, read, and close. Uh, so this interface brings in uh, a lot of new features. So uh, you can now request multiple lines at once. Uh, with a single uh, with a single IOCTL, uh, you can set and get read values of, of uh, lines with a single IOCTL as well with a single context switch. Uh, now it's very easy to find to look up GPIOs by names, uh, also chips, by names or labels or uh, however uh, they, they, they they are uh, you know uh, identified in the in the kernel. Uh, the support has been added for uh, new features, like, I'm sorry, for example, uh, we can now specify from the user space uh, if a GPIO line that we want to drive in an output mode is uh, uh, connected as open source or open drain uh, line, which affects the, the way we, or we will uh, drive it. Um, then uh, we have a uh, way now to identify the current consumer of a line because if someone else uh, has ownership of, of a uh, of a line, we can now uh, it, it can set the consumer string when when requesting it, and uh, we can uh, we can pull it out from the kernel so that we know uh, who's using uh, a line, be it in the kernel or in, in user space. 
And now it, uh, the, the character device will now work with UDEF, so it appears uh, through the UEvent uh, interface. Uh, we can uh, specify UDEF rule so that uh, permissions will be set accordingly. accordingly. Uh, and yeah, uh, since we now use open, we, we have a uh, file descriptor associated directly with the, with the line so that the polling is uh, much more straightforward. Uh, and the events are queued so that we uh, can, read, uh, can read them one by one. So the character device uh, ABI lives in, uh, I, I don't know why, why I use the API, it should, should have been an ABI, lives in uh, Linux GPIO.h uh, in the Linux UAPI uh, section. Uh, so the driver is logically, uh, sorry, the driver, the header is logically split uh, into several parts. So we have uh, the, the chip info operations, line info operations. Uh, we can request lines for values for reading them or, or uh, setting them. And then we can request lines for reading uh, events uh, and read the events themselves. So uh, for each of the operation, there is uh, usually a data structure or more data structures and a couple uh, IOCTLs. So I'm going to go through, uh, through these operations. So first of all, that you uh, for the first thing that you usually want to do is to get uh, information about a chip. So uh, you open a device using uh, the open system call. Uh, the device lives in, for example, for in, in this example, it's a uh, DEF GPIO chip zero, uh, and you have a structure defined in the header I, I showed I showed before. So the GPIO. Uh, how do I right? So. You so the structure is defined in the header, and then you open the file, you store the file descriptor, and ju you just run the IOCTL, uh, the, the chip info IOCTL, while passing the info structure as, as argument. This uh, will fill the structure with a uh, name, the label, and the number of the lines. So this is this is quite simple. Uh, and now the second operation that you're gonna that that you usually want to do is to get info about uh, about the line. Yeah, so. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, when? Uh, yes, yes, because... Oh, no, no, the, the, the direction we're going to set uh, after that. Like, th this, this only opens the device uh, in read-write mode. This, this like, the, the open itself, that doesn't do anything. This just opens the chip. So on the chip, there are several lines. Uh, like, the lines are associated with a chip. So now we just open the device, the device file, and we run an IOCTL that retrieves the information for us, so it, uh, it fills this structure with information about the chip. So now we, we, uh, so far we haven't touched the lines, so this, this is just the info about the chip. Uh, so for example, in this case, the chip's name will be GPIO chip zero, and the label will be whatever we, we call it. Uh, and the number of lines will contain the, the number of the lines associated with this chip. So this, this is the hierarchy I, I, I was talking about, so that you have After after you call the IOCTL, the number of lines appears in, in this structure, and you know it like the kernel knows it either from DT or from board files or from ACPI. How, how like uh, the, 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 there are multiple ways to uh, to tell the, the the kernel how many lines are there on, on the chip. Uh, so now this one is about the line. So if you want to get the information about each GPIO line associated with a chip, you have to call for each of it the uh, GPIO get line for IOCTL. So you have the uh, GPIO line info uh, struct, and what you do is you just set, you, you, you mem set it, well, you, it's, it's not uh, mandatory, but well, let's, let's initialize it, and then let's just set the offset of the line we want to know something more about. So in here we, we want the third line, like the, the, the fourth line, so the index three counted from zero, uh, of the line associated with this chip. So this FD here is the file descriptor we got previously from the from the previous uh, IOCTL. Uh, so is, is is this is this clear, in general? So now it gets interesting. Uh, yeah. So this structure gets filled again by this IOCTL. So the only thing we set is the line offset, and then uh, the kernel 
fills the se tells us what the flags of this uh, line are, are and uh, its name and consumer. So a line, a line mi may have a name, it's not mandatory, and it may have a consumer. If it's already in use, it's going to have a consumer uh, defined. So now it, uh, it gets interesting. This is where we set the direct, yeah? You were gonna get a uh, question mark. <laughs> so, uh, sorry? So the, the question was, uh, if, if there's no consumer, uh, what, what, what are we gonna get? It's gonna be a question mark. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna define, uh, am I? Oh yeah, sorry, I, I forgot about the flags. Thank you. So the question is, what 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 the what are the flags? So yeah, the flags are defined here. Uh, the, this this is the variable. So flag kernel means it's being used. It's not very obvious, but this flag it means that it's being used. Not necessarily by the kernel. It might be used by the user space, but uh, the, the flag is going to be I'm going to say kernel. Then this is the direction. So if this flag is set, the direction is output. If this flag is not set, the direction is input. This is the active state, so the uh, potential inversion of, of, of the values. And then open drain and open source, this tells us if the kernel knows how the line is connected, uh, if it's open source or open drain, it's gonna be reflected in this, uh, in this flag. So yeah, so now the request. Uh, what we do, in, uh, if we want to request the lines, if we want to take ownership of the lines, we have to uh, fill this structure here with a number of line offsets. So uh, we, we, can, we, can, we can specify up to GPIO handles max, which is uh, 64 lines. Uh, we s fill this array with, with offsets of the lines we're interested in. Uh, then we set the flags. So now the flags. This is how we, how we set the direction. So the flags, uh, we, we, have to, we have to set the, 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 the flag, the input or output flag. Then we can specify if, if, if we want to invert the, the, the logic, and uh, eventually, uh, potentially, we can also specify the open drain, open source flags from the user space. If, for example, the kernel doesn't have this knowledge. Uh, yeah, and if so, what what what, what do we do? Uh, in, in this example, we want to uh, request the lines uh, in the output mode. So we want to drive the lines. So we set the, we we take the structure. We set the flags to. GPIO handle request output. Then we say that we want two lines. So number of lines is going to be two. And then we, we set the offsets. It's going to be three and five. And then we set the default values for these lines. In this case, it's going to be one and zero. Uh, this is the consumer label. So we, we, we set it to FUBAR. We call the IOCTL with the previously uh, retrieved FD. And what happens now? This FD is being filled uh, by the kernel. Uh, kernel creates a, a new file descriptor for, a, uh, for an anonymous inode, and uh, this FD is being set to the value. So uh, one, when we, if we now want to set or get the values, I'm going to talk about it in the next slide, we use this FD, no longer this FD uh, retrieved by the, by the first IOCTL. Yeah. So this is how we set or get values. So uh, in the previous example, we, we set it to uh, output, so we're going to set it. Uh, this is a very simple structure. Again, we have, ju we have just the values, and these values correspond with the lines that we previously, uh, re previously requested. Uh, so we set the values to, uh, to, to, to some new values. In this case, we invert the, the, the values. And again, this time, we use this FD. So the FD that we got here. And again, we, we, we call the IOCTL sw uh, either the set line or get line. The difference is that for get line, this structure is going to be filled for us by the kernel. Whereas here, we need to fill it ourselves and pass the data to the kernel. So uh, is, that, is that clear how, how, how we do it? So yeah, so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, accelerate. Uh, yeah, so now the events. This is, this is uh, something interesting. So uh, if we may want to, instead of setting and reading values, we may want to set it to input mode and act, uh, passively wait uh, to be notified about events uh, using the, the, the poll um, operation. So again, uh, this time we also have to retrieve the FD from the, the file descriptor from the kernel, but this time it's uh, one file descriptor per line, which is uh, obvious because we, we need to know which line uh, raises an event. Uh, so again, we set, uh, we take the GPIO event request structure, we set the line offset, we set, uh, in, in this case, I, 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 uh, we, we set um, 
the, the direction explicitly to input, but uh, the output direction will not be accepted by the kernel because obviously th this couldn't work. Uh, we wait for both edges events. We can specify if we only want to be notified about rising edge or falling edge events. Again, uh, consumer label and uh, IOSTL. This IOSTL is again called on the descriptor uh, of the on the chip descriptor. So on the first one, on the, on on, on uh, we, 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 from the operation we, which I showed on the first uh, page. What's happened now? What's happening now? Uh, this FD gets set by the kernel, and we can now pull it uh, for pull in and pull pull uh, pull pry events, which is showcased here. So uh, we pull it, and when an event uh, occurs, we read an event. Uh, we we read the data to a buffer uh, that is this structure. So what what do we get? What kind of information do we get from the kernel? We get the timestamp of the event and an ID, so we know if this is a rising edge event, if the value uh, changed to high, or the falling edge event uh, when, when the value changed to low. Uh, right. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I want to talk because I, I understand that this API is super complicated. Like, I, it's not super complicated, but it's, it's not very convenient. So. Uh, the first question, when I, when I first heard about this interface, the first question uh, I, I asked myself was, how do we get people to use it? Because this, this is, uh, like the SysFS interface has an obvious advantage over this one that it's just convenient to use. Because uh, you don't have to write a C program to, to uh, toggle the GPIOs. So yeah. Uh, so for this, there is a project called uh, Lead GPIOD. Uh, and my involvement with this uh, project uh, has a history of uh, around one year. So uh, last time during the ELCE in Berlin, I, I was, uh, there was a talk by Linus Valet, who, who, who is the maintainer of the GPIO subsystem in the kernel. And while the talk was uh, about, uh, about the new things in the kernel API, uh, Linus um, briefly mentioned the GPIO device, uh, the, the character device, as a new recommended API and the uh, ABI for, for the user space and that the SysFS uh, is being deprecated and that the end goal is to remove the SysFS completely uh, because this is the, the only way to remove this uh, global number space from the, from the kernel, which is the, the goal for the far future. Uh, and that time, uh, about a year ago, I was working on, on the Baylibre Acme uh, cape, on the power measurement cape, and uh, we were switching uh, to the industrial I.O. Uh, subsystem in the kernel, to, to using the under, under industrial I.O. for the measurements. And these Acme probes, I don't know if you, if you, if you saw them, they, they have power switches, like external power switches, which are connected uh, to, to GPIOs in, the, in, the, uh, in an expander. And we wanted to manipulate these this power switch, uh, switches, so turn them on and off. Uh, and we tried, like, the f my first uh, idea was to integrate it with the industrial I.O. system, uh, su subsystem. But this was uh, shut down because uh, this has nothing to do really with industrial I.O. So my, uh, I was told back then that I should try with the regulators. Uh, so I submitted a patch to the regulators, but I, I wasn't aware that uh, apparently there is, uh, th this is a no-go. So any, any kind of user space involvement with the regulator is no-go. So this was uh, knacked as well. Uh, and I, I think I was told by someone to, uh, to just stick to GPIOs. And then I, I uh, saw the talk uh, from Linus and uh, learned about the GPIO dry, uh, character device. Uh, and I decided to write a, because obviously this, this was super complicated, I decided to write a set of uh, tools uh, inspired, uh, I'd say, a, a bit by I2C tools. Uh, do you know I2C tools the, the for, for interacting with the I2C device? So, uh, I was kind of in, in inspired by this. I decided to write, uh, write, write, write a small project for that and uh, also to include a, a user space library with a simplified C API that, that will be uh, easier to use and that will uh, better keep track of what's happening behind the scenes, uh, keep track of all the, all the file descriptors and, uh, and whatnot. So I released the first version uh, in January this was written uh, very fast, so uh, I, I tried to stick to, to like, uh, I don't know if it's GNU standards or, 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 or whatever, but uh, for example, like the, the major release should be stable. So I released it, but uh, uh, I'm, I was not very happy with the API since it was very rushed. I, I wrote it in a, in a week or so uh, and released it. Uh, 
So the latest uh, stable version is 0.3.1, uh, but uh, I'm working on a 1.0 release, uh, and the API has been uh, completely re reworked, so it's, it's quite different from what you're going to see in 0.3.1. Uh, also, uh, this API would need review, so I, I would be really appreciate it if you could uh, look at it and, and send me an email if, uh, ab about what you think, because uh, I, I don't want to release something that, that's going to turn out to be, to be not, not very good uh, again. Uh, and what's inside? So we have a uh, C API, uh, fully documented in Doxygen. Uh, it, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to show some examples. I'm not going to go into much detail, though, because uh, I, I think the documentation is, is, is quite uh, detailed. And uh, with the library come a set of uh, command line tools, because this is something that, that, that's going to interest you the most, so a, a way to uh, script your, your GPIO operations. Uh, so there's a set of tools. And we have a custom, uh, custom test suit that works together with the GPIO. Uh, it's actually GPIO mockup kernel module. We have this testing module in the kernel, which, uh, which exposes like dummy GPIO chips. Recently, it's been uh, extended. Uh, now it has uh, things like uh, an, an interrupt simulator. So you can actually simulate interrupts uh, and see if your uh, polling operations still work. Uh, and uh, this, te this test suit is custom because I, I needed to work with a kernel module. So no, uh, I, 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 I thought initially by about using some Google tests or something, but in the end, I, I ended up writing my, my, my own thing. <coughs> so. Uh, yeah, so uh, with this test suite, we can also test uh, the kernel uh, ABI. So as, as soon as some regression happens in the kernel, we should uh, figure it out uh, by just running the test suite. So the C API is uh, logically split uh, into some parts. So the first one is the simple API. This is, uh, this is a set of functions that uh, will allow you to set, get values, wait for events without dealing with any kind of resources. So uh, this will, this will uh, do everything for you. Uh, and then there is the low-level API, where you have chip operations, uh, line operations, uh, for event requests, and, and then iterators that allow you to easily iterate over a set of lines. So this are th this, these are some examples. Uh, so how, how does it look like in the low-level API? This is not the simple API. Uh, this is the low-level API, where all the, all the uh, kernel structures, uh, kernel UAPI structures are hidden behind opaque uh, pointers. Uh, and I believe that it's, it's much more straightforward to uh, just open the chip, then get a line by index or by name. Uh, this, this is not shown, uh, shown here. Then uh, specify if you want uh, uh, GPL line input. Actually, this, this, this function has changed, but the, 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 um, now, it's, now it's, it's a uh, request line input. Request a line and then set and get value. Uh, so, yeah, I, I encourage you to look because, th as, as I said, this is the low level uh, library API. If you look into the simple API, you're going to see uh, how, how it's exactly it is used. So, I, I, I unfortunately, since I don't have my laptop, I, I can't show you uh, where to go. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, this, this, is, this is explained quite, quite well uh, in, the, in the simple API. And yeah, so the tools. Um, so I, 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 I the, the project is called libgpiod, but uh, I I'm should have probably named it uh, GPIO tools because uh, this is probably the, the, the most used part of the, of the project. So you have a couple of uh, user space programs that allow you to detect the chips that are in the system. So when you run it, it uh, iterates over all the chips uh, that it finds and displays their name, their label, and the number of lines associated with it. Uh, then there's a, a second program called GPIO Info. Uh, you pass it the number of uh, the, the, the name of the chip that you want to inspect, and it runs through all the lines. So it basically calls the get, inf get line in info ISTLs on all the lines and displays you the info. So the offset, the name of the line. If it's uh, unknown, it's unknown. And then the user, here it's not used, so it, it would be filled with the consumer, its direction and uh, active state. <laughs> then you have GPIO find, which allows you to easily find the GPIO by, uh, by name. Uh, so you pass it the name of the GPIO line, and it uh, tells you which chip and which offset this line is on. Uh, next tool is GPIO get, 
this is how you uh, how you can get values. Uh, so uh, if you only know the GPIO by name, you can run GPIO find, and this output passed to GPIO get will actually allow you to get uh, to get uh, the value, the current value of this line. Uh, and so, yeah, but usually you would you would use it like this. So you 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 can you can pass several uh, offsets after the chip argument to get several values at once. Uh, so this is an example how you uh, how you use GPIO set. But about GPIO set, this requires more uh, thing uh, more 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 details. So uh, a line in a GPIO line, the kernel can be by default driven high or low. Doesn't have to. The pin can be uh, floating. But uh, if it's actively driven. Uh, you can't just exit from GPIO set, so you can't just close the file descriptor because all the state, after closing the, the GPIO chip file descriptor, all the state returns to default. So what you want to do uh, here is sometimes you want the, the program to still run while you wait for, uh, for a user input because if the line is, uh, is actively driven high or low, it's going to return to the default after you exit from GPIO set. So if the pins are floating, you can just exit. If they are not, you have to specify either mode wait, or there are more uh, modes. You can wait for a signal, you can wait a specified amount of time, or you can wait for user input. <coughs> then an interesting uh, program is uh, GPIO Mon, which allows you to monitor lines for events. So by default, it monitors all, um, all events. You can specify additional parameters uh, that allow you to, to only watch a rising edge or, or falling edge events. Um, and uh, this is the default output, so it's human readable. But you can specify a custom format if you want your your uh, your events to be parse parsable by by another script or another program. You can specify a special uh, a, a specific uh, uh, non-human readable format, and uh, the output will be like this or whatever you specify it to. Uh, this is. Uh, these all programs are, are uh, quite extensively documented, so I, I, I believe that uh, it, it, I, I, there's, there's no really time to, to get into much detail. So the state is uh, like this. I, I want to release the 1.0 version soon. Uh, this, but uh, for, for the future, so not, not for this version, I want to introduce a GPIO daemon, which will uh, take which will which will allow you to, to take control uh, more detailed control of the of the GPIOs in your system with better permission handling etc. Uh, G C++ bindings are in progress. Uh, it's going to be quite simple. It's just for for people using other languages and Python bindings. Since I noticed that uh, quite a lot of uh, GPIO handling from user space is done in in Python uh, for robotics for for ho intelligent home systems. So uh, this is going to be added as well. And potential well bindings for another for other systems, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know Node.js, so but if if you know it and you would write like to write bindings, I, I would gladly accept them. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm I'm not really a G Node.js uh, programmer. So yeah, where to get it uh, if you want to try it? It's hosted at kernel.org in uh, libs libgpiod. Uh, releases are also uh, on, on kernel.org. I made it available for build root, uh, but it's also, I, I know that someone packaged it for uh, Meta Open Embedded. Uh, also, some, some other people packaged it for Fedora and Arch Linux. In fact, Fedora, in uh, their bleeding edge release, or ho however it's called, already deprecates uh, SysFS. Yeah, uh, almost done. So it's packaged for Fedora and Arch Linux. And yeah, contributions are welcome. Please use the uh, mailing list and oh, it's remit. Okay, so we have uh, time for uh, questions. So, uh, yeah. Sorry, what? It it works just as regular user space poll. You can you can you can break it with a signal. Uh, no no problem. So, I'm I'm, I'm afraid. Can, can, that, does does the microphone work? Okay. No. Yeah, it works. It works. So it's can 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 you can you repeat your question? No, I'm okay. okay. Uh, uh, could you uh, move back to the slide where is event registration for wine? In the in the in the kernel API? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, is it is it it's here? Yeah, uh, I think it's not clear that you actually create an interrupt, right? 
GPIO as interrupt. Oh, it, this is done in the kernel, so it's not really relevant for user space, right? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, when you mention it, IRQ simulation, it means this is actually creates an interrupt, right? And goes through oh, no, IRQ uh, chip. So, so, sorry if I wasn't clear that the interrupt simulation is done in the kernel module uh, for, the, for the GPIO testing. Uh, but this is just something that happens behind the scene to, uh, scenes to, uh, to, to be able to you know, simulate interrupt. Yeah, but what I mean, uh, yeah. thi this one, when you register uh, this event, it becomes an interrupt. And if you cat proc interrupt, you will yes, see that. Yes. Yeah, th that is not clear from the slide. That because what I, 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 didn't <laughs> I didn't think that it's relevant for user space. Uh, for cat proc interrupt, it relevant for debugging at least. OK, okay but uh, the question, the main question about this um, flags for line, back, one slide back maybe. Uh, where you put slides, uh, flags, yeah, when, when you retrieve flags. Uh, why the list of flags only limited for those, like open source, open drain? Why, where is pull bias, like pull up, pull down? Because and it's everything. not implemented in the kernel. Like, uh, it's, it, like it, it, it's not exposed uh, in, for, for the user space yet, but uh, I, I guess this is, this is something that in the future can be added. Like, this, this, these flags, I, gu I guess, are quite extensible, so. Okay, and uh, really slight uh, comment that IOCTL API has no version instructs, right? So it's not scalable to improve, to update, extend. Now, actually, Lin Linus Valet was uh, mentioning that uh, we can add additional flags, no problem with that. Anyway, the pull up, pull down is part of the pin control subsystem, not GPIO. So it's totally different. Some old GPIOs still are using GPIOs and it's property of GPIOs, not pin control. It was before pin control. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a legacy. So, uh, hi, thanks for the talk first. Uh, one question. Um, with the old legacy Sisyphus approach, uh, there were a whole lot of uh, context switches which made it very slow and you couldn't really do bit banging in user yeah, space. I yeah. suppose this is one big advantage yeah, of if, this. If you have this, uh, this crucial use case of, of bit banging from user space, then, then you can do it with this framework. Um, with the eventing, you use, uh, I see at least in the API of the kernel, they used U64. Um, for timestamp, for time yeah, yeah. yeah. I, wh wh where was that? Uh, uh, so that is not a struct time spec, which is usually used for such interfaces. How does it relate to struct time, spe time spec, and do you have any idea why they didn't choose that for the interface? Uh, I wasn't uh, involved in uh, in this API, so when, when I started uh, being involved with this, this was already carved in stone. Uh, I, I Frankly, I, I don't know what the reason was for using the ti timestamp. How does it relate to struct time spec? Uh, well, in, in the library, I use struct time spec. So the question is, how does it relate to time struct time spec? You can convert it to time, time spec by, uh, by, by, by dividing it uh, by, by uh, what is it, one milliard and, and one billion, and, and then modul moduloing it uh, for, for, for the nanoseconds, yeah. This is what I do, well, this is what I do in the library, yeah. So. Uh, Maybe, maybe some other questions. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, again, timestamp. Uh, to which timer does it relate? This is a very good question. Uh, I, I will look it up definitely, and uh, I, I, I can't tell you right now. Okay, so uh, we, we, I, I think I think we don't have any more time. I'm gonna be here around for for a couple more more minutes, and uh, I have a plane to catch afterwards, so so I won't be here anymore uh, during the the conference. So thank you very much for coming.